Welcome to your easy to understand tutorial on how to complete the main easter egg quest within the Shadow Throne in World War 2 Zombies DLC 2. If you don't already own this map I'm going to be doing a giveaway for a few codes for this DLC on PlayStation so if you want to be entered simply leave a comment down below with your PSN ID. Make sure you've dropped a like rating on the video as well as subscribe to the channel. Feel free to use the comment section as a way to get teammates in case you want to get some co-op buddies to help you complete this easter egg. Now, this can be completed on solo and any number of co-op players but I highly recommend you do this in a game of three or more players as this is quite difficult and the extra players does help shift the workload of these steps very easily. Now our first step is going to be simply activating the radio on Main Street. So all you need to do is go up to it and hold square or X so that you're physically using it and you'll see a prompt saying use the radio. Now you'll also notice that above the radio box there's going to be a model number on top of it. You want to note this down and you want to go Go and open up the map until you get to the church and within the church you're going to see a map and you want to locate the district that is marked by a red pin on the map the model number on the radio changes every game so it might not be the same as what you're seeing in my game but in this particular game it was zx0 in my game the red marker on the map was pinned under an area called dam spreewald so i go and look on the sheet of paper to the left to see dam spreewald and look at the series number and scroll down on dammy spreewald to like find the model number of our radio which was ZX so we can see the band says 87 so I know that my first starting frequency on the left side of the radio is going to be 87. If you recall our model number is ZX0 so I see ZX is 87 and then on the second box to the right I see there is 0, 1, 2 and 3. Ours is 0 so I look at 0 and the corresponding number next to it is 86.2 so round that up we have 87 on the left and 86 on the right. So I go back to the radio and I tune the radio on both the left and right frequencies to match those numbers that were left and right. If you've gotten the two frequencies right you'll see the light under the radio go green and you should start to hear a voice from someone called Mikhail. And Mikhail will mention that there is going to be a massive airship that you'll want to take down and in order to draw the ship towards us we need to let off a flare. So you want to come to the plaza section and there's going to be this box which you want to shoot or melee the lock of the box to fall off and then shoot or melee these box of flares and it will shoot flares into the sky to signal the Russians. Once complete you're going to hear an audio dialogue from Straub and the Zeppelin will fly above Main Street from the back of the church and drop anchors across the map. Specifically there's going to be an anchor that's going to be right in front of you. This is a soul box so go ahead and start collecting souls by killing zombies nearby but the first zombie that gets turned into a sizzler by the Zeppelin overhead will turn into a sizzler and when you kill it by using your melee weapon it's going to give you the geist bolt and this is one of the two parts you need in order to build yourself the wonder bus now i'm not going to include a full guide in this video as it's pretty simple if you don't know how to build the wonder bus then i have a link down below in the description or the interactive eye in the top right of your video which you can click open click that and it'll take it into a new tab where you can learn how to build the wonder bus as we're going to need to obtain it for the next steps of this easter egg the main gist of the easter egg steps from here on out is we're going to be obtaining three very special uh, upgraded melee weapons. There isn't any particular order that you need to obtain these in just as long as you eventually get all three of them as we're going to be putting these into a wall to open a secret door. Starting off with what I think is easily the most easy one to do and you guys can start this as soon as you get the wonder bus and you want to go into the room where you built the wonder bus and you're going to shoot this cash register sitting on top of the filing cabinets with the wonder bus's primary fire and the drawer is going to open and if you crouch underneath it you're going to notice a photograph with numbers written on it and these are radio frequencies so you want to run to the radio on main street enter the frequencies given from the cash register drawer if inputted correctly there'll be a green light and you'll start to hear some audio from a mysterious smuggler character once you've made contact with him via the radio you want to make your way to the plaza and you're going to see this little square panel on the ground right by the bar wall by and it's also near one of the entrances to the church you want to just simply shoot at it, hold square, and the panel will open and the smuggler will start to speak about the Untoten and how he doesn't have a weapon to defend himself with. And you must now arm the smuggler by activating the hole in the ground to pass him a weapon. Now, as it stands, there isn't any real logic to this. It seems to be complete random and we assumed it to be a weapon type. Now, a lot of the time, 
buying the combat shotgun from the museum and giving it to him has been a weapon combination which has worked for a lot of people but it randomizes every game some games i've given him my starting pistol and it's worked other times i've given him an mp40 sometimes i've given him a sniper rifle an lmg it's all completely random so just keep messing around and trying different weapons until eventually the smuggler will take the weapon and accept it you need to be careful here because even if it's not the right weapon he will still take the weapon from you and simply say i don't have the right ammunition for this weapon but whenever you do find the correct weapon to give to him there'll be an on-screen prompt saying you've armed the smuggler and at this point you need to progress two full rounds before we can interact with the smuggler again now if you're pretty clued up about the easter egg steps within this then you can go ahead and start doing the quest for the other weapons but we're going to stick with the smuggler for now so once we've progressed two full rounds you want to go to the front of the theater and you simply want to hold x or melee this square panel on the ground it'll be another gas station circle and it's going to reveal another small hole where the smuggler will speak to you again this time rather than giving him a weapon you'll have to drop jolts into the hole in the ground and you have to keep dropping money until the smuggler is satisfied with the amount that you've paid him this step can take quite a while and even on solo it's actually quite dangerous to do this without going down so just be careful and once you complete this there'll be an on-screen prompt saying you've paid the smuggler and it'll mention about knocking three times at his apartment and all you need to do is go back to the area where the wonder bus was first crafted and there's going to be a door now you're going to need to have a melee weapon of some sort even if it's the shovel that you picked up from the spawn room not picking up any melee weapon won't work it has to be some sort of melee weapon and you simply want to melee the door three times it should fall down a whistling should be there to surprise you and within there you'll see the body of the smuggler and a gold baseball bat this is one of the super weapons which we need so you want to just hold square to pick that thing up run all the way to the church and in the wall grate you can now insert this weapon and that'll be one of three done the second weapon we're going to obtain is going to be the dancer's dagger and to start this off you want to make your way into the bedroom it contains a sleeping woman on a bed and beside her bed up on this wall is going to be a painting you simply want to look at it and hold square and that will activate the painting that will be located above the dresser and you'll have picked that up you want to make your way to the theater if you make your way through towards the back you're going to notice a projector you want to interact with it and it's going to place the painting down in front of the projector and above on the balcony is going to be a second film reel that you want to shoot down it's going to fall down onto this sort of like pile of wood you just want to pick that up place that onto the film reel the projector is going to project a mini map overview of the shadowed throne onto the actual theater screen and this is a representation of different soul boxes i've gone ahead and helpfully labeled where every single location is that may pop up green it will be a little green dot but essentially the top of the map is the church and you just want to make your way through that towards the bottom and what this is is it's locating a bunch of soul boxes which are small toy dolls clown dolls to be precise and these are going to be soul boxes but rather than filling up with kills for there to be some sort of uh, unlockable it doesn't quite work like that so in all you're going to have four locations where there's going to be different dolls around the map collecting souls and it's your job to count how many souls each doll collects in the sequence so in our game the first location we had was behind the projector screen in the theater so it's in this corner here and it took four souls before the soul box was completed our next location on the mini map took us to the puddle by the melee wall which is literally just outside from the first location and this took eight souls in order for it to complete and you know it's completed because there won't be any more electricity coming from the zombies and you'll hear a sort of like discharging noise as well the next location was the chandelier in the museum so as soon as we enter the museum there's going to be a load of chandeliers and there was a doll sitting on one of those that collected four souls in our game before it was done and then finally our last location was was on the double tap machine which is in the plaza and that took a total of five zombie souls before it was done and the cycle would literally just repeat itself but with that knowledge the first sequence the first doll collected four souls the second collected eight the third collected four and the 
fourth collected five. So that gives us a code of four, eight, four, five. And whatever amount of zombie souls you have in your four dolls correlates to the code that you're going to have to input into the safe in order to open it. This is your safe combination and that's the order in which you completed the clown doll kills in that order. Now this safe works as a real combination lock does, starting with a full right turn of the lock to clear all inputs and then you continue turning right until you've reached your first number. I couldn't get this to work in my game but my buddy Milo was doing it so you can see the third person he resets it by spinning it anti-clockwise so the numbers are going from zero then nine eight seven six rather than going clockwise where they're going up and he reset it a few times and spins it over to the number four and simply twists it from four and actually goes up in numbers to get to eight rather than go down to zero and then keep spinning it again so turns it to eight then he turns it back to four and then spins it to five. And once he lets go of the safe and just waits a few seconds, the lever for the safe opens on its own, revealing a head and the dancer's dagger. It's really as simple as that. I've seen a lot of people mention about, you know, rotating it fully four times to reset it and having to rotate it after putting down each number, but it's really not necessary. And that really overcomplicates things. If you follow it the way that we did and make sure that you don't go over the numbers, you're very precise with your movements, then you you should be able to get this first time and with the dancer's dagger you simply want to take it over to the melee wall and add that in and that'll be the second melee weapon achieved within this guide for our final weapon we're going to get ourselves the axe and in order to do that you're going to be looking for a radio frequency which will be written in one of three locations around the map the first location which is the one that we found it at the most is going to be on the side of the dresser on the back right side of the stage in the theater you can see it clear as day and it's scratched out what looks like to be from a knife and on it, it always has the same coordinates 20.3 and 66.8 if it's not there then check the museum wall which would be this like granite wall slab below the m1 grand wall by in the museum and if not then check the elevator near the apartments once you found the scratched out numbers, you want to input those frequencies onto the radio on Main Street, and if done correctly, you'll see the green light illuminate. The radio will start to output Morse code, and this is where you're going to have to translate this into plain text. Now at this point, you should open the description because I have a link to a very handy Morse code translator, and you're going to be listening to the radio for the Morse code, as it's going to be outputting short beeps, long beeps, dashes and pauses. It's not going to be a very long sequence and it's going to be either three or four numbers that you're going to actually hear. So keep listening out and inputting what you hear. It will play over and over repeatedly forever until you get this right. You can check if you've inputted the Morse code correct on the link in the description as you can play the actual Morse code that you've labeled in. But on the screen you can see exactly how you type in what you can hear in order to translate it into numbers. Short beeps are dots. Long beeps are dashes, pauses are spaces. You should either get three or four numbers which correlate to the X and Y axis of the map which is in the church. Now in order for us to interact with this, we're going to need to pick up a small magnifying glass which you can find in the theatre right here on this sofa next to this top hat. You need that. Interacting with the map in the church allows you to move the magnifying glass and you want the magnifying glass to be over the coordinates you got from the Morse code on the X and Y axis. Unfortunately, I didn't get to record this but my friend in game did and here's another shot of someone else getting it done in their game but when you've done this correct it should open the cabinet to the right of the map and inside the cabinet should be a scale bowl now for the next step you're going to want to have a melee weapon and just play along to the next round or to whenever you can get a sizzler zombie to spawn in and what you want to do is you want to melee it near an armor machine and kill it and what should happen is the zombie should be behaved headed and its head should be on the armor machine for you which you can now pick up and you bring both the head and the scales over to the museum and in this section here you should be able to place the bowl and the head and what should happen is there should be a prompt where the scales activated and the weight should be even a prompt will appear on screen saying that you have balanced the scale at this point you now want to use your melee weapons and get melee kills near the rabbit which is next to the scale and once that's complete a drawer will open from the table that the scale is positioned on 
revealing a axe and this is the final melee weapon which you can now pick up and place in the wall and that will be all three of the wonder weapons in the wall and now they become their own soul boxes. Now this goes in order and first of all you will only be able to kill normal zombies and the souls from the normal zombies will go into the dagger. Now this does take quite a lot of souls so just be patient. The next soul box is going to be the axe which only takes souls from the sizzlers so you're gonna have to be training zombies around so you can wait for them to become sizzlers and then kill them and then once that's finally completed the last soul box requires pests so wait for a pest round or if you have a lot of pests in your round at this point then make sure you're killing them by the wall as that will fill up the bat and that will open up the secret door behind us which will lead to a really exciting area. And this is called the Hidden Courtyard, but this is of course not complete without some secrets and puzzles. And we're going to be going through a series of puzzles involving statues. The aim of this is to get all of these statues to face the massive Barbaros statue in the middle of the courtyard. On each side of the wall, there are going to be four statues all facing different directions. Now, what the aim of this is, is that there's going to be several walls with sets of four statues and the aim of them is to have them all pointing south which is facing us where we can see the actual statues faces facing towards Barbarossa statue. And the way you work this out is actually quite simple but it may require a little bit of trial and error before you work out a pattern and a formula. So the way we've done this is we looked at each statue and labeled the way that they're facing as either north east, south, or west. Pretty simple stuff, and I'm sure most of you all know your north, east, south, and west. If you don't want to label them as that, then you can label them as the directional arrows that you'd see on a keyboard, you know, up, down, left, and right, depending on how they're facing. Up being facing away with their back turned to us, and of course down with them facing us. Now, some statues will turn 90 degrees when shot, some will turn 180, some 270. It's pretty crazy, and what you need to do is you need to shoot each statue to work out how many times the statue rotates every time it's shot. If this sounds confusing, then don't worry. I've actually made your life a lot simpler. And when I say I have, actually, my friend Javano has actually made your life a lot easier. If you open up the description, there is a link to his website where he's created a statue puzzle solver, where all you need to do is look at which wall you're going on because you can only work on these one wall at a time. So when you first enter the courtyard, the first wall that you can enter interact and change with, simply click on the wall and then click on the statue positions that you see. If the far left one is pointing north, then obviously have your arrow pointing upwards. If it's facing towards us and have your arrow pointing down. If it's facing east, then have it pointing right. And if it's west, then left. But if you input all of the statue positions for the correct wall and click the solve button, it should give you a solution which will tell you how many times you have to shoot and in the correct specific order as well as Shooting some statues will obviously affect the position of other statues and hopefully this website should be able to give you the guaranteed solution so you can do this extremely quickly. The website is being updated quite regularly so the layout and the way that you input this may change from the time you're watching this video but if anything it should be a lot simpler. End up having the statues all facing you perfectly and when this happens you will have a raven statue spawn towards the left or right middle statue. There are four walls in total, meaning there are four separate puzzles which you guys are going to have to solve. But again, if you don't want to use the puzzle solver in the description, then this will be simple trial and error, where shooting one statue might affect two statues on the right side, and shooting one of the statues on the left might affect two on the left side. It's up to you to work out the perfect combination where all of them will be facing towards you and will be facing the Barbarossa statue and giving you those Raven statues. One once you've gotten all four of them, walk up to the Barbara Officer statue and place them down. What's going to happen is you're going to see the Raven statues appear and then suddenly disappear with a bolt of electricity and they're going to be scattered across the ground. I don't know the logic behind this, but follow exactly what my friend Milo is doing here where he's picking up these Raven statues and placing them in specific positions at the base of the Barbara Officer statue. The logic to these placements is something which I don't understand, but if you watch this, you'll get this every single single time 100% correct and if done correctly you'll see an on-screen prompt which will say collected the ravens and you can now obtain the blade of the Barbarossa sword at the base of the statue.
if you run up the stairs back towards the map, there's going to be a wall placement where you can place the blade in the empty slot on the wall and it'll allow the gate to open and let you back into the map. At this point, it is time to prepare for the boss fight. Now, a prerequisite going in is that every single player must have a fully charged wonder bus as it's required for the final step of killing the boss. So if you've got packed mule on, make sure that that is your third weapon and you take that in. But I definitely recommend a LMG of sorts, definitely Jack in the Boxes. Our team had a full host of Jack in the Boxes and uh, using the Shell Shock ability really helped as well. But I also took in an MP40 upgraded because there's MP40 wall buys inside the boss fight. And in terms of getting ammo, you might run low and it's very easy to be able to just pick up some ammo of a wall weapon that's already there. The final thing to do before you are boss fight ready, as well as getting all your points, getting all your weapons and all your perks, is there's going to be anchors around the map. We got one right at the start of this tutorial. It dropped in front of the plaza. We filled it up with zombie souls. There's going to be three more around the map, which you're going to need to charge up using the wonder bus and its right trigger ability. There's going to be one which is going to be near towards the spawn room here, just lodged near the apartments. There's going to be another one which is going to be associated in the ceiling of the museum. And the final one can only be shot once we've opened that gate into the courtyard and you can see it above there. Once all four of these have been shot, you're going to notice that this gigantic pod will be available near the main radio in the plaza. And when you are all boss fight ready, all players need to go inside of this pod and shoot the ceiling with the wonder bus at the same time until their wonder bus is completely emptied. As if you stop shooting, you're actually not going to go into the Zeppelin. You're going to fall back down into the map. But if done correctly, the anchor is going to close its doors. It's going to lift all the players inside that little pod into the Zeppelin and it's going to start the boss fight. Now, this boss fight is split into a few different stages. The first one being a little section where you have to reroute the power and open the gates using the various fuses located on these little control panels across the entire deck. Now, this is a very simple thing. You literally interact with it and you use the right or left of your left trigger to direct a little blue ball of electricity from one beam to another. The next sort of podium that the beam is traveling towards is another control panel somewhere around within this room here in the Zeppelin. But you must be careful because there are zombies spawning. It is going to be like a normal zombie round, but there is just a ton of zombies. I didn't film myself rerouting the power on every single panel, but it is pretty self-explanatory. You are going to want to make sure that you have covered the circuit. It splits into two, one going upwards and one going downwards, and eventually the power is going to lead towards this control room where Dr. Straub is located in. And the huge twist is that Dr. Straub actually gets overrun by zombies and killed in the process process and you'll see an on-screen prompt saying defeated Stroud. At this point you want to head back towards the anchor which we arrived in and this is where the boss is going to appear. The boss fight is again in several different stages. Now the first stage is actually pretty simple, but as we're playing with four players, coordination is a must in order to survive. So shell shock using your jack in the box is going to be super, super helpful. But essentially the boss is going to be walking around and at points, the weird orbs on the top of his body will start glowing. And at that point, that's when he will take damage. He sort of does a roar. And at that point, that's when you will see hit markers when you shoot at the yellow orbs on his body. You want to keep doing that until eventually you'll see a quote from your characters if you've got subtitles on this will definitely help now notice something about the boss injecting himself with a syringe which makes him even stronger like i said this is not your typical boss this is actually pretty difficult if he swipes you he will take off two health of your shield so be very very careful it also has a charging attack so feel free to make full use of the area of the map that you have playable and definitely you know keep switching between keep using your jack in the boxes and keep coordinating as Shell Shock was an absolute lifesaver for dealing with the amount of zombies that we had coming for us as well as the boss. 
But the same principle stands with this stage of the boss fight. You again want to be shooting him when he's roaring and you can see the yellow orbs exposed on his back. He seems to do it a lot less often during this phase as he's probably learned that we found where his weak spot is. His third and final phase is where things get quite deadly. He's able to shoot these discs which launch electricity and can hurt you. And he also causes huge amounts of electrical damage around him and on the ground. So if you're near, you're gonna take a lot of damage so make sure you're taking uh these like sort of staircases up here so you've got that that elevated ground but essentially when he's using and exerting all of his electrical energy that's when you want to be using the new wonder weapon and lasering him it's the only weapon that is going to deal any damage to him at this stage in the boss fight normal guns just don't work at this rate you have to be using the brand new wonder weapon on this guy when he's exerting his electricity and at any chance you get really because if you see hit markers that means you are damaging him there'll be a load of energy surrounding him when you're shooting him with your wonder weapon and that's when you know you're inflicting a ton of damage and you simply just want to repeat this with the wonder weapon until he eventually dies once he's died you want to make your way to the pod which you originally came into the zeppelin in all players in and the door will shut and bring you straight back down to the map where everything went crazy and from here, this is where you'll spawn back in and you'll be given the Easter egg ending cutscene. And once that has finished, you'll get yourself the achievement that Jaeger down and you will have completed the Easter egg inside of the Shadowed Throne. Good on you, my friend. Let me know down below in the comment section if this guide helped you out and also Feel free to check out all my other guides I've created for the other maps for World War II Zombies and will do for the future DLC maps as well. If you need any additional guidance, I have everything written down below in the description and hopefully all the help you'll ever need will be down there. But thank you so much for watching all the way through to the end if you're still watching and I'll catch you on another one very, very soon.